both four months into production and Kyle is reacting to a lot of feedback, preparing for the mid-design playtests. So at this stage, I'm working on all the ability animations on the new model that Jimmy and Phil have been working on, and it looks fantastic in game. When we first started with Kel'Thuzad in the game, we brought in the Warcraft 3 model, which was just to kind of be a temp model to kind of build the silhouette and look approximately how Kel'Thuzad would look in the final version. This is a preliminary file, and this is us getting our bearings with what we're trying to make. We've examined the differences between what the character looked like in War 3, what visual changes were made from that to World of Warcraft, so we can quickly identify how Kel'Thuzad stacks up next to all these characters and how the shapes that influenced War 3, World of Warcraft, how those are going to be reinterpreted for Heroes of the Storm. So I'm working on all the ability animations, and I've seen the new model that Jimmy and Phil have been working on, and it looks absolutely amazing. Kel'Thuzad has these enormous skirt pedals, which I'm kind of freaked out because it's a lot to actually track. I have to animate them by hand, but they look fantastic in-game. He was designed so long ago for a game that had a different camera angle, so bringing those elements into our game always is a challenge, but it's something that is really, really important to make him fit into the Nexus. One of the first things we do is we actually look at his scale, and his shape in comparison to all the other characters in game. Heroes of the Storm brings together all these different universes from Blizzard. And a lot of my time is spent developing what the proportions should look like because WoW has really bold proportions in color while StarCraft is a bit more practical and gritty and then Diablo is very detail oriented. And we have to blend all those together so we have that perfect kind of Heroes of the Storm, Blizzard the game. These guys put a crazy amount of work into the character. Little things like their height, their depth, their width, their footprints, how much space they take. Everything has a huge effect on the way the character plays once it's in the game. Throughout the process of designing Kel'Thuzad, a lot of the challenges came with the fact that he's supposed to be gigantic, but because of our game angles, we can do only so much while not being disruptive to the gameplay uh, feel and aesthetic. So we have to find a mid-ground to ultimately you know, make him seem that he is still that size and that presence, but also make it so that it's not intrusive to the overall game design and gameplay. I've really wanted Kel'Thuzad to be a character with a lot of height, a lot of vertical presence. When we first put Kel'Thuzad in the game, uh, he was taller than the towers. A lot of people are saying Kel'Thuzad is too big. My personal opinion is I like him big because, you know, he's the hero I'm working on. One of the hardest parts about developing character art for Heroes of the Storm is our art has to go through a lot of scrutiny and make sure from these different camera angles, the store, hero select, draft, most importantly game view, the art has to hold up in all of those viewports on top of it has to function as a piece of interactive art. Those challenges are very real and I'm trying as hard as I can to get that translated from Warcraft 3 to WoW and then back into Heroes and make sure that's accurate, that not only are we making a great piece of character art, but that it adheres to what the game actually needs for just pure functionality. This is the finalized block out. This is the model that we presented to everyone. Is This is our interpretation of Kel'Thuzad and Heroes of the Storm. So the model is in game and I've blocked in some early versions of the animations for his abilities. And now we get to see how everyone reacts in the mid-design playtest. This is what we call the first design play test. We've now gone through the paper design of the hero. We've looked over it as a group. We've sent in our feedback. This is the first game we've played with real human players after our AI play test, which is where we test the kit with just AI in the game. Kyle's been hard at work refining it, shaping it up. We have his kit in a good state, and we're ready to try it out against other heroes. Does it still feel as fun and satisfying against other players? What is it like to play against Kel'Thuzad or play alongside him? What's it like to use these abilities against a human, right? And so we'll be looking at just the fun of the character and also the readability of the spells, the power of the spells, maybe they're doing too much, too little damage. The feedback we're most interested in from these playtests for art is how does Kel'Thuzad look in-game right now? Does it hit the fantasy? Does it feel good? And, and I think that's the biggest, biggest point of the early playtests. For this first one, it's more like, does he feel good? Does he, does he play right? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Playtests are critical, actually, for the entire design process. Not only do they help us get in and check out the initial design and start to work out what's fun, what's not fun, 
but they also help us find bugs. They help us see how um, a new element in the game is going to correspond to everything else and how it all fits together. So it really helps us touch every aspect of the design pipeline for when we're putting something into the game. Let's get the absolute worst case scenario. Yep. <laughs> We have no idea what's going to happen. It's very possible that two minutes in, we get a script error and hard crash the game and can't play Kel'Thuzad until next week. We have no idea yet, so it's going to be a pretty crazy day. They're going up to the other boss. It takes too long to get everything online. It's good burst when they're rooted, but early game, like before that, it's, uh, it's like kind of weak. Not even an accolade. Yeah. Feels bad, man. Brightling, Brightling. Oh, there's Kelsey's out. Oh! <laughs> well, Rag is not the big badass anymore. So the game went pretty well. Kelsey's out. Didn't see any super major bugs or red flags. The biggest takeaways for me would be his early game damage is a little low, so it takes a little bit too long to get the quest ramping up the way I would like to. We might bring him in for another game, cheat him so his damage is like 10% higher or something just so we can get a feel. Let's see what happens if we push it. Overall, his combos felt good and it was pretty fun to play him. Making a hero is a lot of hard work. It takes constant iteration. You'll come up with an idea, it gets tested, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe that happens a hundred more times. It's just how it goes. The next thing will just be iterating on the, the trait and playing him more, getting a feel for how the combos and, and the abilities work together and as a whole. Next week, we'll definitely start rotating him for other designers to play him and offer their feedback. Let me know how they feel when they're executing on his combos. How do they feel just playing the character? We'll continue to expand the scope of who's playing Kel'Thuzad and giving in feedback as we continue to iterate on and hone in on these abilities, get the numbers right, get the mechanics right, see how his trait quest is doing, because that's probably going to be the thing that's going to take a lot of different versions until we find the right one. The iteration ends up making an amazing thing. It'll take you all kinds of places you never thought you would go. It's a thing we're very proud of here at Blizzard, but you got to work to get there. <laughs> I've played a lot of Blizzard games my whole life, and I enjoy these universes, and with Heroes of the Storm, I get to visit every one of them. Now it's like, yeah, let's work hard and translate that experience into Heroes, and I love that job.